is Aaron Moffitt. Mo Moffitt? Mm -hmm. uh, with Viapoint, he's the security team lead. Uh, he's talking level one, how to break into the security field. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Uh, just want to go through a little bit about my, uh, my background here. Um, growing up, my father used to uh, repair and program the robots that worked on the automotive lines. So I always had computers in and around my house. As a matter of fact, that, not specifically this one, but it looked exactly like that. It was my first, my very first computer, and uh, I can remember still hearing those drives sing. But uh, excuse me, thirty-two years, so give or take, it would have put me at about uh, six years old. Got involved with uh, in computers at my house, and and uh, like I said, we always had the equipment all over. Um, in about ninety-eight. I uh, got a job with a, a internet service provider. Throughout the last 17 years, I've worked for the government, um, a number of large uh, corporations, uh, and now I'm the uh, team lead at Viopoint for security monitoring. It's funny, one year ago today, I was actually sitting in those seats uh, and was not part of the security community. So in just over, or just actually just in a year, uh, have moved from being a uh, sysadmin, network admin, uh, project manager, to uh, the team lead at, at Viopoint for the security monitoring team. This field can seem to be uh, very daunting sometimes. And when I first was at my, my very first conference, which was B-Sides last year, uh, I felt extremely overwhelmed. You know, everyone here seems to be way smarter than I ever thought I would be. Um, you know, some people are, are almost mythical in their proportions. Uh, obviously, they were just talking about Mudge, right? And like, wow, how can I ever achieve anything like that? Um, like I said, I was just a kid who grew up on this stuff. It wasn't, you know, I, I didn't go to some kind of hacker boot camp or, or uh, you know, eat and breathe this stuff. It was just something we, you know, I did. So, oops, let's go back. All right full rundown. Uh, the three things you're going to need to be successful in business, really, but in this field as well, and also in the other uh, other fields of, of IT and information assurance, um, are focus, attitude, and aptitude. The focus part is probably the most difficult piece. Um, this is from a book called uh, Essentialism, Essentialism, The Disciplined Pursuit of Less by Greg McCown. Uh, it really, what you're trying to focus in on is what's called the highest point of contribution. You know, obviously you can read the slide. These questions that you have to ask yourself are, you know, right, is it the right thing for the right reasons and at the right time? And right time doesn't necessarily mean right time as in uh, the industry is at the right time. Uh, because as we all just heard in the, the previous speech, that it is the right time. There are, there are more IT security jobs, uh, you know, available. We just have to figure out how to get them, and then also when we get them to be better. The question is about right time is, are you ready to be able to uh, focus yourself to achieve the things you need to achieve to be better? Uh, I always make the joke that I, I always say I really would like to have washboard abs, right? But I also really like beer and donuts. So uh, the answer really is that I don't really want to have washboard abs, right? Because having those things would force me to give up uh, beer and donuts. So the people who do, is it the right time? Is it the right time for you? Are you ready to succeed? So if it is, that means there may be some sacrifices involved to be better. Are you doing it for the right reasons? Uh, you know, there obviously is some higher paydays here uh, in the security community, but that's not really necessarily the right reasons. You know, there's there's tons of great reasons to get involved, though. Like we, uh, like uh, Mark mentioned, you know, we're going to be on the front lines of uh, of healthcare information and um, the energy industry and uh, scholastics and general business. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can do here to 
really help protect uh, our society. And then the right thing, you know, what what can you bring to the table? Maybe you're still set. I'm not a hacker, right? Um, or I'm not a red team guy. Uh, but I am really good at, at managing managing efforts. Um, and because of my broad brain, broad range of skills, um, it has really lent itself to me understanding the uh, security monitoring environment. So think about how the right thing, the what. How does your skill set apply? And then also, too, when you know what your skill set actually is, you can also then start, uh, you know, filling in the holes of where you, you might improve. You know, the real question is, you know, are you ready to do that? Once you figure out what that is, go for it. The next step is get involved. They just mentioned that before. Uh, Mark, my, my talk really kind of dovetails with it. Not as eloquent, obviously, but... Um, Said so my first my first con was last year. <laughs> first talk is this one, so uh, I'm trying to do my best to get involved. Um, but yeah, join my sec, uh, GERCON, you know, B sides, converge, get on LinkedIn, uh, start making relationships with 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 your peers, um, also with the uh, people that you aspire to work with. Uh, this seems like a, a kind of a no-brainer, but in my earlier in my career, I, I kind of took it for granted. Obviously, I'm, I'm a bit of a hybrid between introvert and extrovert. extrovert. And I don't always uh, do the due diligence that I need to do to, uh, you know, build the relationships. And I've really done my best to, to try to adjust that and, uh, and um, you know, follow up with people, make good, make good connections, uh, care. Also, they mentioned uh, Twitter is obviously one way to get involved. But as you mentioned, you've got to be really careful with, uh, with the echo chamber. Opportunities abound, right? The unemployment in this industry is a percent. Uh, that was uh, one of the latest uh, articles I read, and that's most likely a uh, you know a marginal rounding error. <laughs> uh, there's more jobs than they know what to do with that we can actually fill. So learn the skills, learn our language, be a team player, be professional. We are selling trust, so be trustworthy. These handful of things, very self-explanatory, I hope. Um, and hopefully we all strive to be a lot of these things, right? But I'll tell you, there's a lot of these things in here that I have to kind of reaffirm every day that I want to be, that I want to do, you know, or uh, the things that I want to be. Uh, you know, being flexible, that's difficult. A lot of people get stuck in their ways. Being approachable, even harder, you know, uh, a lot of times too, especially since a lot of us are introverts. Um, we spend so much time thinking about problems and solving problems and, and how can I make this work better that when somebody uh, interrupts you, that can be a big problem. Um, and as Mark said previously, you know, we have to change the way people look at us, right? Uh, we're, there, we're there to help. So uh, we, can't be, we can't be seen as the, uh, you know, the, the guy in um, a dark hoodie and, and uh, look, looking to cause mischief. No, nope. we're here to... Uh, we protect the people who can't protect themselves. Some platitudes here. Uh, obviously, if you're not willing to learn, no one can help you. If you're determined to learn, no one can stop you. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a truer statement. Um, in 2004, I took the SEC Plus exam twice and failed it each time by one point. Uh, and after that, I just kind of let it go. I was always interested in security, but I was like, oh, well, maybe it's not for me, and I wasn't really decided to put any effort into it. But of course, until, uh, until last year when I decided that I really needed to change my focus and, and put a little more of myself into my work. Um, you'll often hear a lot of people, and, and again, Mark touched on this as well, the, the whole idea behind schooling and certification, but you'll hear a lot of people... Uh, talk about like they go to a class or a training like that, that that was worthless and the only thing I can think of is that they didn't challenge themselves to learn something new they wasted their time uh, again I always hate to read my own slides but 
For years when I was young, people said, you have so much potential. I used to be flattered by it. But as I got older, I realized that potential is a negative word. It meant that there was something or a lot that I hadn't achieved. Uh, again, something that I think is uh, really poignant, right, is that uh, a lot of us are smart, a lot of us uh, are talented, but you really have to reach deep down, find the thing you care about, figure out how you can reach that, how you can be involved, make things better. Alter B, Stanley? Yes. Uh, so, uh, there are uh, 800,000 Xbox achievements. That's a lot. But when you think about it, are they really achievements? I mean, this whole thing, I'm amazed that our society makes such a big deal about giving awards to actors, right? Think about that for a second. They give awards to people who pretend to do things. That's, it makes my brain boggle. Right? But, so instead of spending time doing virtually nothing, get out there and do something virtually. Why pretend to achieve when you can actually achieve? Oops. Again, Mark had mentioned uh, Eastern, right? Eastern's got a great program. Um, I've also spent a lot of time, I'm, I'm involved in Eastern. Uh, also at Oakland Community College and in their uh, IT club. Um, also, uh, while well, I was in the IT club at, o uh, at Oakland Community College, they had brought in representatives from each of the schools above, and uh, their information assurance programs uh, all looked top-notch. And I think last I heard, University of Detroit Mercy had built a, a huge cyber lab. Um, education cannot be discounted. It, I think it'll pay dividends uh, throughout your life. The love of learning will. Whoops. Can't drive today. Again, professionalism, right? Uh, the industry doesn't care, again, how, how many uh, 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 conferences you went to, how much we tweet, all that stuff. Um, there's this article from uh, Tom's IT Pro is that you know, is that this? It's invaluable. When they, when people look at you, potential employers look at you. They're they're going to be looking for this type of stuff. Also, too, you know, they, they uh, people will mention obviously that CISSP, oh, it's it's worthless, or Sec Plus isn't all that great, or whatever. But even while you're studying those things, you're starting to in ingrain the uh, ideals of security um, and the uh, and the know-how, right? So while you're studying for it, even if it's considered to be easy, these are things that now become uh, ingrained, that, that, that uh, become part of who you are, what you believe in, things that you know, not stuff that you kind of remember. Oops. Top five info certs. This is also from uh, 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 Tom's IT Pro uh, article. Um, Sec Plus is a great place to start. And not only will it help you build your knowledge, it will also help you build your confidence. Um, you said it's certification um, really should be worn as a badge. I know uh, Mark had mentioned that we, we poo poo it a lot, and that, that just it absolutely blows my mind. Um, you know, like I said, it, Xbox has got 8,000 achievements. Do your best to just get one of these. All these, the focus plus aptitude, or attitude plus aptitude, uh, will take you a long way. Uh, the couple of the books I mentioned, um, another great book is by uh, uh, Daniel H. Pink, which is To Sell is Human. Uh, in that book, he talks a lot about uh, that we're all selling all the time. Um, a lot of people will fight against that, right? But the idea here is that when, when in, any, anytime you ask someone for something, whether it's their time or uh, at work you're trying to get resources for your team or for uh, a new project, right? You're selling. You're selling yourself, your idea uh, to the mahogany row crowd usually uh, to try to get some of those resources. Also, too, I'm, I'm selling you guys right now. Probably not well, but that, that I know what I'm talking about, right? Or at least I have some experience in this to... to you know, pass on, on my experiences uh, that's truthful and honest, right? 
So think about that, and that, that goes back to the the idea of being of honest and approachable and friendly and hygienic, right? Is that you have to believe that the, whatever I'm saying, whatever I'm selling, is uh, has value. Also, to uh, meditations by Marcus Aurelius, uh, obviously one of the uh, greatest uh, emperors, um, and uh, it touches base on a lot of of really heartfelt ideas. Uh, one of my favorite lines is, if it's not true, don't say it. If it's not right, don't do it. Could, does it get any easier than that? Um, and then, of course, uh, the aptitude part, right, is uh, I had to throw a book in that I just recently read that if you are interested in security monitoring, uh, pick that book up. It breaks it down um, into very understandable chunks. So, uh, the aptitude Hone the piece that you're interested in. Find something to read. And uh, I don't know if we have time for Q&A. We do? Oh, okay. Any questions? Any questions? No questions? Yeah. So your background yes. in robotics and working with the public side, how did that help you get ahead of the curve? You did it for years. How did you do it? How did your background help you? Well, that, that, no, I will say that with, with coming with zero background, right, if somebody were to do that, your, your path is going to be a little changed. I, I had a bit of a leg up because my entire, my entire professional career has been in uh, IT and information services. So, um, but the, uh, his background in robotics, you know, it, it, were, it was like having Legos when I was a child, but it was a computer, right? So if I press this, this came out, you know. Um, I remember one time I had uh, <laughs> uh, got attention, and uh, I was supposed to write. In the, we had these, uh, you know, write five hundred times. You know, uh, I won't do whatever you gum or talking class or pass class, whatever it is. And I have writing a script on the computer. Like I conned the principal into letting me. I'm like, hey, can I type them out? You know, typing is a skill. Is that cool? And uh, so anyway, I wrote a script and I just you know wrote it out a bunch of times. <laughs> And then printed it off. And I'm sure he knew that of what I did. I mean, it's not like he was a computer guy, but right, he, he knew I was a fairly um, mischievous child. So, but the point being was that he knew I was learning. You know that, that there wasn't another kid in class that could, you know, write a script on a. I think it was on the first Mac uh, that we had at school, and uh, the actual Macintosh. Uh, so, again, that's, that. How does that help? I mean, you have to be naturally inquisitive by nature, I think, just to be in this field. Um, not just security, information systems in general. But, um, yeah, how has it helped? I mean, like I said, it's, uh, it's core to what I, who I am, I guess. So it's, I don't think I could get away from it if I wanted to. Um, Mostly. Mostly, <laughs> yeah. There's different ways. Yeah, sorry. Um, sorry. How does it help? Uh, um, well, you learn the fundamentals, right? I mean, uh, uh, it amazes me sometimes when, uh, and, I, and, I, and if there's any of my other team members here, I will say this all the, I say this, you know, daily. If you can, if you can master one application in computers, uh, and I mean master it, it's Excel, it's Excel. And if you can do that, you will always have a job. I don't care. Somebody will hire you. But that's the type of thing. So those those type of skills that I actually take probably for granted because I had honed them for so long over many years, uh, you know, probably really helps obviously at this stage of the game. It, Mark mentioned too about having a broad skill set, right? Get involved. Um, not only uh, uh, you know in a work environment, but that's also part of that community. Um, like I said, the guys up here setting up the CTF. Um, there's all kinds of maker communities in Ann Arbor. Um, get, uh, volunteer maybe at the local library or find a school or something that you're also, um, you know, passionate about. They're going to need some IT help. Um, that will definitely give you experience in, in other areas where you might not uh, be able to get that through your job. Um, I believe I'm a, I'm a big supporter of the American Red Cross. Uh, I give blood a lot. Um, and uh, I also care about St. Jude's. So there's times when I can, you know, volunteer my time in helping them set up 
uh, mobile blood drive or something like that, or or make sure their wireless is is uh, you know working correctly. And those type oh, yeah those type of um, uh, opportunities abound. Uh, like I said, you probably already know some people that could use use your help. Um, and again, that gets you out in the community. Again, doing part of the things that we want to do as security professionals, which is, of course, be helpful um, and help your community. Do you have a particular role in mind uh, in security? Is that why you started like, going through certifications, or did you just start going through certifications and building that knowledge and then get to a point where you said, okay, now I'm ready, I'm done to apply for this type of role? That's a, that's a very good question. Matter of fact, my first or second MySec meeting, and, and I had already been kind of kicking this idea around in my head, right? And uh, I was actually talking to Wolfgang, and um, I had mentioned, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm kind of struggling here to uh, get into the cyber community. It, there just seems to be uh, such a wealth of knowledge that comes from every direction, and how can I know all this and know all that? It, 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 that we call it work called it analysis paralysis, right? There's just too much going on. So uh, you know, he asked me, he's like, well, what do you want to do?" And I said, "I want to be, uh, I want to manage a blue team." And right there was kind of cemented that, even though it just kind of came out of my mouth, right? I didn't necessarily know exactly what I wanted to say, but obviously, Wolf is one of those guys that seems kind of legendary when you're at these uh, uh, conferences and stuff. I said, I "Want to manage a blue team?" But that solidified it in my brain that you know what, this is. That that's a worthy goal for me to achieve, and something that I'm already kind of, you know, I had enough experience to do, at least to start to shape my career that way. Whereas if I was to be like, you know, if I would have said I want to be a red team, you know, expert or something like that, uh, while the knowledge of how systems work and and fit together uh, probably would have helped me a lot, right? Um, I, I'm just not a, a I'm not a hacker by very, you know, red team hacker by nature. I'm more of a fixer than a breaker. So, um, no, and that's the, when you, in the beginning about the uh, highest point of contribution, right, those are the questions you got to kind of ask yourself is that, what is it that you really want to do? We have people on our team, or uh, in, in our uh, company, you know, um, Jen Fox, who's, who, uh, I don't know if she was out here at all, but um, she does talks, but she does social engineering and policy and compliance and, and rights procedures and things like that. She's not really, uh, I shouldn't say not, hopefully I'm not speaking for her, but she doesn't seem to be as technical as, say, some of our other team members um, when it comes to, like I said, obviously red or blue team. But her information, her thoughts, all those things, I mean, I go to her all the time for, for that. So where, do, where, does her, where does her skill set really lie, and how can she maximize that, right? And then also you have to find something that you're interested in, because, again, you're going to start putting a bunch of time in on, on honing the skills, so you better find it interesting, right? If you're doing something you hate, you're, you're just never going to be as good as, you know, the people who love it. So um, I, I like working with teams and people. So you mentioned that uh, certifications are so good in the progress. What would you recommend for you know, students now coming out of college where they don't have any real job experience yet to put on there, they don't have a certification yet, they have education? Um, what kind of skill sets or extracurriculars do you feel that your company well, that uh, that's a great question. Um, well, I think uh, immediately, say, if you were going to come and, and look for a job with Biopoint, uh, and you're sitting down with me, I, I would definitely look. If you if you came out of school, right, the next step is what what, would, what was your what's your plan? You know, how, how do you think you're going to take your career someplace else if you were given an opportunity? Uh, we'd want to talk about. I'd want to talk about that. You know, obviously, because if you if you've got your degree or you've got a degree, that shows that you can commit to something, you can complete something, right? So I would talk about what what's your next step, and maybe you're not there yet. Maybe you just need this this helping hand up to get that moving. I'd also be you know, hopefully you had some put a, put some thought into maybe what cert certifications you would like to get, um, and then obviously, and I think Mark kind of downplayed a little bit, but this stuff and, and most employers would never ask probably, but. Um, I, I wouldn't hesitate to put it on a resume. Uh, going to these events, again, shows to me uh, that you're invested. Um, I, I'll say this, too. If you ever meet with me to, for a job on the monitoring team, um, make sure your shoes are polished. And I'll tell you that right now, I, I won't hire somebody whose shoes aren't polished. And the reason being is attention to detail. 
That's all that means, that you have respect for yourself, you have respect for me, you have respect for the job. That seems like such a stupid detail. Like, well, who cares what kind of shoes I wear? But again, it's attention to detail. It's those very small things that will, that, again, say a lot about you. You know, I also wear a watch. The reason why? Because it says time is important. You know, these, these things are all very subtle. You probably didn't even notice. Uh, but when you're, when all those pieces being honest, hygienic, you know, approachable, funny, all those things add up. And, and uh, I think when people are trained to kind of look for those, we, can, we know when they're not there. At least you hope you do anyway. Okay. Thanks, everybody.